back everyone to another youtube live sell those flipping cars i'm zachary and today is sunday questions and answers automotive questions and answers nonetheless for us to uh get our vehicles back up going on the road now i know a couple of you actually caught me earlier today and i don't know if you guys do that on purpose hmm uh no you know, we need our vehicles back up and going, and, you know, sometimes you just can't schedule it when uh, they uh, break down, right? There you go, bud. So, I'll tell you guys right off the bat, my wife has the utmost confidence in my parenting skills, obviously, because she goes to the grocery store, leaves me alone with Xavian, and I have to do the YouTube Live. So, she knows I can watch him. Hmm? There we go. Hey, that's confidence right there. Bam! Mission achieved, people. All right. So, uh, let me see. I had a, a person catch me earlier today with a fuel issue. And another person caught me with a battery charging issue. Okay? And then, um, what is it? It was another starting issue. So, I need to hear back from you guys. You know, I know you're not on the, the live right now, but hopefully you watch it in the future. And tell me, down in the, the comment section, are you guys wanting a video about just the charging system, uh, about the ignition system, the, the basics that you need to look to when um, your vehicle won't start or won't run, or when it has a rough idle? I know that was another question this morning as well. But these are all basic things I actually want to go through with you guys and make sure that everyone knows that. And that way you don't have a broke down vehicle. And if your vehicle won't start or won't run or it's overheating or the battery won't charge, you know what's going on. And if you don't, you can look here, right here on the channel and see what's going on with your vehicle that way you don't have to pay the uh, the high cost of repairs so man that's a win-win for all of us right because uh what is it so misha which is my wife her cousin has a 2007 malibu a chevy chevy malibu i was i was judging if i want to say chevrolet or chevy but it's a chevy malibu the oil pan okay the oil pan replacement they were quoted fourteen hundred dollars that's one thousand four hundred dollars isn't that absurd that's crazy right so i'm not knowing anything about the job you know of course i volunteer for it and i'm like man that would be such an amazing video to make right and uh to find out it's about a seven hour job uh because chevy wants to use an immense subframe in their their car so hey thank thank you for that one chevy thank you for that one that's that's much obliged um so i went ahead and looked into it a little bit more since we have all data and it is a chevy thing chevy loves subframes across all of their models in paula you're looking at the same seven to eight hours a corvette is 17 hours isn't that crazy hold on just a second damien what are you doing buddy Come here. He's trying to walk his turtle. Yeah, which the, the turtle has wheels. But who wants to use those, right? Why use wheels when we can just drag the turtle along? Um, hold on, buddy. Let me see it. Let me see it. All right. So, we have said turtle, okay? And I'm asking if you guys want to know more about your suspension or your uh, ignition, okay? Charging system, stuff like that. If you do, and comment. Hit me up in the comment section if the live is already off. If it is on, just hit me up in the comment, you know, and say, yes, uh, you know, you want to know more about your ignition system or your, your uh, charging system for your car. Um, this morning I had a question. Uh, someone hit me up before the YouTube live, and I don't want to be that jerk, you know, to say, hey, hey. You just wait, sir. What time is it? 10, 10 a.m.? Mm-mm. No, you wait till 2. 
<laughs> you know? Though, so I was helping him. He's having a rough idle in the 2002 Dodge Ram 1500. Now, the 2002, uh, that was right before the, uh, the Hemi, I believe. It was like 2000. You're looking at the Magnum in the 2002. And uh, he was having a problem with a rough idle. Okay. Yeah, Zabian keeps giving me cars so I can uh, talk you guys through it. So he was having a rough idle, right? And this uh, this rough idle he's having, um, and he's getting codes from it, is actually the mass airflow in the uh, throttle position sensor. Now, the mass airflow actually sits in your intake tube, okay? So it's not in the intake box itself over in the corner, it's in the intake tube, okay? So when you go to actually clean a mass airflow, and I had someone bring this up to me the other day, so please listen. When you clean a mass airflow, you need to unplug it, okay? And if you're unplugging a harness, a plug of any sorts, you need to uh, unhook the negative side of your battery, okay? A little bit better, look at that. Now you can see my golden locks. You're welcome. <laughs> all right all right so you take the ground wire off of your battery then you unplug your mass airflow okay if you are dealing with a mass airflow sensor problem and you're trying to clean it and you don't feel comfortable doing it without talking to a mechanic hit me up in the comment section guys okay i'll talk you through it everything will be fine okay it's very easy so when a person cleans their mass airflow, you don't take it out of the intake tube. And, you know, most of them, most of the time, they're, they're stuck in there pretty good. So uh, if you, you can't take it out, then you're, you're cleaning it through the intake tube itself, which is okay because they have a straw that comes with the mass airflow sensor cleaner. Okay? So no problem there. Now, the throttle body sensor, that's something totally different. Okay? That's in your throttle body itself. Okay, where the uh, butterfly valve is that everyone knows about, okay? Because everyone's seen an old hot rod movie with the, with the butterfly valves working. Same thing in the throttle body. Their throttle body is just noticeable, okay? So once you actually take that intake tube off, your throttle body, spin, um, your throttle body sensor is actually going to be in there, okay? Now, uh, throttle position sensor. Jeez, my apologies. Your throttle position sensor is in your throttle body, okay? A uh, great example is on the Jeep, okay? It has a, a nice big circle on the 2005 Jeep Grand Cherokee 4.7 liter. What is this? Yes, thank you, bud. Um, and then right below the circle is a crescent moon. Right in there is your, your throttle position sensor, which is about like that long. So you just spray your throttle position sensor cleaner in there, and that cleans it off. Right there will fix your rough idle problem, okay? Because a lot of times you are having a rough idle because if you look at the sensor itself, it's like three forks, okay? I'm going to try it like this. That's oh, it? something stuck on my finger that I just... I couldn't give you the example without getting it off. Okay, so it's like three forks, okay? These two on the outside are plastic, okay? They're just sitting there. And then the one in the middle is a finer uh, grade wire. That is your actual sensor. Now, because of fuel and petroleum products, when they're burned, they give off carbon and sometimes uh, carbon deposits will actually build up on the sensors just like it builds up on your hey give me that turtle give me that turtle you know you know i'm talking to people up here i'm taking the turtle no nope. you want to take the turtle upstairs yeah all right take the turtle upstairs there you go thank you all right, so carbon deposits will actually build up on your sensors, but they'll build up on your valves as well. Chevys, 
also have a big problem with this. Carbon deposits will build up on the valves, not allowing the valves to properly seal all the way, and it will take pressure away from your engine and the combustion you know, chambers. So another big problem. But let's go back to the mass airflow and the throttle position sensor, okay? So you have them unplugged, you spray them, and you let them dry for about 10 to 15 minutes, okay? Let them dry if you have compressed air. You can, uh, you know, very softly spray it. You want to air dry them. You don't want to do it any other way. And you definitely don't want to use a compressed air and just hold it down and blow the thing out, okay? You don't want to do that, okay? So that will deal with your rough idle. Another person was asking me, uh, they were having a problem, what is it, rough idle on, what is it, two of the vehicles I was asked about, and another one, hmm, hey, Jacob, hey, no, nah, no worries, man, see, I was trying to remember everything, I'm like, man, if Jacob can just show up, <laughs> no, it's okay, so, um, no, another person, I forgot what they were having problems with. It was actually a pretty simple issue on theirs. Um, oh, they were having squealing on the brakes, okay? Now, if you just had your brakes done, okay, or, um, yeah, more like if you just had your brakes done, okay, and you're having squealing to the brakes, first, I would spray it out. Okay, with brake cleaner. Okay, a lot of times some debris or rocks or something will actually get stuck in there. Okay. Uh, baby Liz, what you got, man? Or, or sister, you know, or ma'am or man. <laughs> Let me know what you got and I'll go ahead and help you troubleshoot it right now. All right, yeah, just uh, hit me up in the, the section right there and I'll go ahead and see what's going on here. Boot up this other computer. So, um, no. Now, that's only if you didn't just have the brakes done. If you just had the brakes done and they're still squealing, something is up, okay? Someone needs to double check the hardware. Um, I, didn't, I didn't get another message, man. Uh, I will check on the comments. I haven't received a, a message in the chat yet. Let's see. One second. Yeah, I'm not seeing the paragraph, man. Is there any way you can copy and paste it right here? Yeah, I'm not seeing it on there, baby list. If you can copy and paste it right in this, uh, in the in the chat section, I'll go ahead and uh, answer that question for you. Jacob, were you able to find out what was going on uh, with what we were talking about on your RAM? Awesome. Hey, thank you, brother. My apologies. Um, let me see. One second. Let me bring up those comments I had this morning. Uh, is it your buddy's truck or uh, your truck? Let me see. Oh, okay. There you go. 
Um, uh, that's pretty nice that your ranger was able to do it. Uh, and also, he's lucky he has a friend, you know, with a truck. And I know a, a guy with a uh, Honda Civic he broke down the other day. And uh, he don't have no truck. And his car is, like, lowered all the way to the ground. So, like, good luck towing that one anyways. How's uh how's your other vehicle running though, Jacob? I'm actually dealing with that uh 2007 Malibu right now that I'm replacing the oil pan in. It's just insane. Yeah, with that one, uh, Jacob, that's the one we were speaking about this morning. Um, hold on. That is the one with the O2 sensor. Um, with the Dodge. See, what's what's crazy is the O2 sensor senses oxygen in the exhaust. Okay, and from that will tell the computer how much fuel to put in the system. But your mass airflow does the same but from the intake okay it senses how much oxygen is getting put in so it'll adjust the fuel yes the jack and jack stands placement under the van okay the map sensor on the dodge One second, I'll pull it up for you. Mm -hmm. That mass airflow should automatically be in the intake too. Trying to bring it up. Okay, one second, baby list. I'll bring that one up for you as well. Okay, and that is on a 2003 caravan. Okay. Okay, bringing that one up. All right, baby list. <coughs> you have. Hey, look at this. I'm going to walk you right through it. Nope. Don't hit that button. That'll get rid of the picture. All right. Right here. You see on there, these two points right here, those are your double point welds. Okay? The same with right before your rear tires. You have uh, the pinch weld right there at those four points. Okay? Now you're also going to have a frame point right here and here that you can jack from as well, okay? It's going to be a little bit further, probably about another 8 inches, 8 to 12 inches uh, further inside than your pinch welds, okay? And also, if you just go right by the tire, it's going to be sitting right there and right there for your car. 
Any questions, man? Now, Jacob, back to you. Mass airflow in a 2002 Dodge Ram, 1500. Let's see here. Of course, no one wants to make it easy for you. Actually, find this thing. Let's see. Sensors and switches. There we go. What? Jacob, are you kidding me, man? No way you do not see that. Jacob, man. <laughs> You got the Magnum in that one, right? Yeah. 4.7 V8 Magnum. Yours as well. Not bad, man. You see that location right there? Hold up. Here we go. All right. So right there is your throttle body. Just follow it a little bit down the tube, and it's going to be right there. It's just going to be sitting on the tube. Now, from the look of it, you have a plastic clip wire harness on there. Be careful with that. From the engine's heat. That clip can be brittle, okay? So be careful with it. Um, go ahead and just pull the little clip up, pull that thing off, and uh, you should be good to go on uh, cleaning that mass airflow. Um, from the look of it, that throttle body cover is quite big, okay? Once you actually take that the first throttle body tube off, it looks like there's an a uh, attachment tube. See that band? Oh, uh, well, this one's not original either. It looks like this one's a K and N. Yeah, because you, you see, I, he actually has that air box sitting there. So this is probably a aftermarket one as well. But your mass airflow is going to be. <laughs> sitting right there man oh i'm just showing you the location I'm not saying you don't know what what one looks like that'd be preposterous no i'm kidding <clears throat> but there you go you know what i had a 2002 dodge durango that had the 4.7 liter v8 in it it's a nice engine it's powerful you know oh well, it was for 2002 you know, now there's so many more uh, options out there. It's insane. But, uh, so what I was telling you about that, that 2007 Malibu is uh, because it has a subframe, the Malibu is a seven-hour oil pan replacement uh, just to get the gasket. And when that gasket goes on those things, dang, that thing is pouring like Old Faithful in oil like beverly hills hillbilly geyser of oil all over the engine it's like so crazy uh also what is it uh on the first we're picking up a new vehicle it's a 2001 nissan xterra another flip of ours but um 
this one's going to be fun. It, <clears throat> it looks like a great truck. A um, couple body things that need fixed on it. It won't start. I love those. Misha does not love those. Oh, she hates them. But I love them because when you finally get that, that engine cranked up and it has not been running for like two, three years or four or five years and no one was able to do it but you were, talk at it. It just feels good, you know? So I like doing them. Misha doesn't like them because sometimes it is a puzzle. And these puzzles get annoying sometimes. And, and that's why I tell you guys, if you ever get aggravated while working on your vehicle, back away. Okay? Just put your tools down and say, you know what? That's it. I, I'm, I'm done for the day. I'm not done for good. I'm done for the day. And you need to take a break. Okay? I did it the other day. I was working on the Malibu yesterday. It was 30 degrees outside. And, uh... Um, yes, I will, Jacob. Uh, yes, I do. Uh, and baby Liz, what do you, what do you mean? Uh, help you with a video? You need a video made? Or, uh, yeah, I don't understand the question. But yes, Jacob, an O2 sensor. Yeah, why wouldn't it fail it? Uh, your vehicle thinks it needs more fuel than it does. If it puts too much fuel in there, yeah, uh, I, I can do a video uh, on that for the the jack points, uh, baby list. Um, it'll be the next time I run into a 2003 Dodge Grand Caravan, though. That's the hard part, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I can add it onto the list for you, man. So, no problem. Oh, um, all right. So, yes, Jacob, it will fail it, okay? If an engine believes it needs too much fuel, it will drown the injectors, okay? They will never get sparked because they're underwater, okay? They don't have enough of the mixture. So, to have a proper combustion in your engine, you have to have... You know, proper amount of air and a proper amount of fuel. If any of these sensors throw it off, you have a, a crank but no fire situation. You know, sometimes or other times when it does crank up, it crank, you know, runs like junk. So, now, um, that's where I would start. You got two codes putting you in the same spot. You know, and both of them are saying your O2 sensor has failed. That is definitely where I would start. Now, would I buy a brand new O2 sensor? <laughs> That's up to you, okay? Uh, you can run the risk of getting one from a scrapyard, and it could be failing as well. Or you just bite the bullet, you know, and get a new O2 sensor, since you already have two engine codes backing that anyways. I mean, that looks like your call for it. But up to you. Um, I believe a, a new O2 sensor. Let me see. Now I'm kind of curious myself. Let me see. One second. And that's for the 2002 Dodge Ram O2s. Um, oh, 4.7 liter. Ah, looks like it's 25 bucks. That's not bad. 25 bucks, brand new on Amazon. And if you're a Prime member, you can get it by Tuesday, so the 26th. Um, those look like OEM O2 sensors, and it's a set of two as well. So keep one <laughs> and, and use the other. Or... Um, yeah, that's that's for twenty five bucks right there. So that's not bad, Jacob. Um, it looks like they have one, 
but it's nineteen dollars. So it's better just to get the the set of two. You know, uh, O2 sensors are, are quite fun though. You know, uh, where they are on the exhaust. Remember, uh, you need an O2 sensor socket to get that thing off. Yeah. Yeah, I looked at the HO, um, the H025. Um, but that was telling you what, uh, what sensor it is. It's the second sensor. What I was getting was bank one, sensor two. So bank one is where cylinder one is. And on the 4.7 liter V8, let's see. 2002 Dodge Ram 1500 firing order. Um, one second. I got the 5.2. Looks like it's going to be on your driver's side. Uh, it's going to be bank one. So bank one sensor two, uh, that one is going to be not the one closest to the exhaust manifold, but it's going to be the one closer to your, you got four by four or two wheel drive. Well, it's going to be down by the, uh, the transmission close to it. Okay. If it's a 4x4, four four, it's going to be close to your front prop. Jacob, where are you from again? Baby Bliss, where are you from, man? Oh, okay. Well, if it's a two-wheel drive, no problem. Um, it'll be below the... Yeah, it should be the one below the Cadillac converter, Jacob. So it's driver side, driver side, lowest one. Okay? Just don't go for the top one. Go for the lowest one. That's sensor two. Florida, man, that's so cool. Me and my wife were talking about Florida this morning. Because it's, I mean, it's like 30, 35, you know, here in Virginia. And I'm like, you know, it's 80 down in Florida. <laughs> like, not trying to say anything, but uh, we could be easily outside working on cars without winter suits, you know, if we were down there. Now, I know some of some of the viewers I have up in Canada are laughing at me. Florida as well. What's, yeah, what's going on? Get out of here. I'm gone. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. No, Florida is beautiful. I, I lived down there for a little bit over in uh, Newport Ritchie outside of Tampa. Beautiful right there. You know, uh, yeah, no. Uh, Virginia is not the same as Florida, but you know, a little bit, a little bit different. You know, it's an ocean. We're by it. You know, so that's cool. So yeah, too easy on the uh, the Dodge Ram. Um, man, Dodge Ram is easy. I will look for the 2003 uh, Dodge Grand Caravan. My message on top. Yes, I, I did see. I will be looking for the 2003. One second. 2003 Dodge Grand Caravan. Yep. Too easy, man. I'll be looking for it. I've actually seen uh, with the with the vehicles selling right now, SUVs and vans are like a hot topic right now. So I want to pick up that Xterra, but I'll be uh, probably picking up a Honda just to fix and flip real quick. I saw one that needed some body work, so I was wanting to 
uh, knock out some body work for some videos. I thought that would be fun. Uh, awesome. Sounds great, Jacob. Let me know if you fix it. If you have any questions during the week, hit me up, man. Uh, I'll be right here. Happy to uh, answer any of the questions that you're having uh, with the repair at the time. So, no, I saw your um, message, Baby Bliss. I will be on the lookout for that 2003 Dodge Grand Caravan so I can do the, uh, the jack points on it. Yeah. No, I, I definitely understand um, with the jack points under the van. Uh, you learn best that way. I totally understand that, man. And, yeah, I can definitely do that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'll make sure that I put myself in action in the video, showing you the, the locations. Oh, referring to the EVAP. <laughs> uh... What in the world? I don't see that one. No. I'm scrolled all the way up, too. What's going on with the EVAP? Are you getting a, a code saying the EVAP canister or you have an EVAP leak? EVAP leaks are actually pretty common. You know, sadly. Especially if you're down in Florida. All right. No problem. Um, I was dealing with an uh, EVAP leak the other day uh, on a Jeep, okay? Uh, Jeeps, especially the, the Grand Caravans, have a, um, I don't know, they're the really basing a lot of their hoses on plastic, okay? Hold on. And that's on the 2003 Dodge Grand Caravan, those two codes? Let me check right now, man. Yeah, I could make a, a whole video on EVAP leaks. It's crazy. All right, cool. I'm uh, looking it up right now. One second. And that's just the caravan. It's not the grand caravan. You're most welcome, baby Liz. My, my pleasure, man. Is it the uh, all-wheel drive model? All-wheel drive or two-wheel? Do you know what engine you have in that one, Iblis? Oh, okay. No, so we'll drive. All right, let's see here. You said P0442. You got a medium EVAP leak detected, okay? And P0445, that's gonna be Four, five, five. Large leak, uh, evap leak detected. All right, let's see what's going on here. All right, probable causes. Let's see. Yeah, normal stuff. All right, so just like any evap leak, we need to start with the first thing. One, the fuel cap. 
make sure your fuel cap, take it off, look at the rubber O-ring that's actually on the inside, okay? If it's dry rotted, if it's cracked, anything like that. If it's warped, if you see, if you turn it to its side and you see the gasket on the sides where it's molding over, okay, that's deformed. You need to replace your gas cap. That can cause an evap leak. Second thing, okay, it's saying you have a large evap leak. If it's not the fuel tank, you might be looking at your solenoid, your purge solenoid for the evap system, which would actually be in the engine. Um, actually, no, that one would not be. One second, purge solenoid. Let's check a location on that one. Okay. If it's not your fuel cap, okay, this is where I would check next. Not only the canister, but the hoses as well, okay? Remember, with hoses, they can actually cause leaks a lot, a lot quicker, and they're, they're just dry rotted lines, okay? Bring this up for you real quick. Okay. All right. Hold on. There we go. All right, so this right here is your solenoid. This is the front of the vehicle. Okay. Oh. Dang it. Sorry about that. Oh, nice. Yeah, you need to because these are the lines that I would check, man, because those are made out of rubber. Once those lines start cracking and dry rotting, they're junk, okay? So that's your purge solenoid right there at the front of the vehicle. Maybe your headlights right there. So, yep, front of the vehicle just sitting right there on the wall, on the fender, okay? Those are the first two places I would start, man. Um... Gas caps are, are known to be an EVAP failure. I mean, I lived in Arizona for a while, and with their uh, their smog test down there, when you're uh, licensing a new vehicle, you get used to replacing a lot of fuel caps. You know, you did? Okay. Are you seeing anything, uh, any leaks at all coming out uh, when you do the smoke test? So is that where it's leaking out from? Is it at that solenoid valve, the, the vent valve? Because if you're not seeing any leaks, man, you, yeah, okay. Uh, hmm. Would check right there. I mean, the, the EVAP system, I mean, it's not like you're, you're really going to be able to turn it on and cycle it like a coolant system, you know. Um, the EVAP system, yeah, if it's leaking out right there, is the hoses damaged at all? Do you see them cracked or dry rotted? Um, I 
add that so on. You know what I really do, big list, is I probably switch out that solenoid man. Go to the scrapyard and switch that thing out because it is saying under the code that your emission solenoid, not emission, purge solenoid could have failed. And that's why you're getting that large leak. Um, yeah, the other thing could be a leak detection pump, but I've never seen those fail. Um, I see a lot of solenoids and a lot of gas caps. Wow, and you're still getting it. You're still getting that code. Okay, yeah, almost definitely. That is insane. So if you replaced all the components, man, it's definitely looking like one of the lines have failed. Because that'd be the only reason you still begin evap codes, uh, especially if you replaced everything. See if they actually have components. There we go. No. Hold on just a second. You got a leak in the fuel system at all? The strong smell of gas towards the front. Have you checked the fuel system and the fuel rail? Or I mean, is there any uh, noticeable wet spots uh, in that area? once you actually take that uh that plastic cover off so that's a 2003 Dodge with the 3.3 liter So, here's your engine, okay? Make sure I hold this thing without dropping it. Okay. Here's the 3.3 liter in the Dodge Caravan, okay? Now, this is your intake manifold, and all these vans absolutely love putting their injectors under the intake manifold. Okay, to even check your injectors to see if they're leaking, you can look in from these points right here and actually see if that's leaking. Now, if it is, that'd be the culprit of your uh, evap leak as well. One second. Yeah. So that would actually be the uh, the culprit of your evap leak on that is. Sorry about that, guys. I didn't want to cough <laughs> on the the microphone. So yeah, 
looks like you're you're gonna have to take that intake manifold off just to actually see the injectors because it here I brought up a better picture bigger picture here okay you don't actually see any of the injectors or fuel lines you're gonna have to remove that intake manifold just to see if you have a leak now if you have a fuel leak I would check all around here okay check these hoses make sure none of them are, are wet or you see a noticeable leak on them okay if you see a noticeable leak you need to look around that area okay a lot of people go for the first thing when they see a leak okay if you are having a strong fuel smell it is because fuel is coming out of your engine somewhere where that the smell is the strongest so if the smell is the strongest in the engine that's where the fuel is coming out easiest way easiest way okay look under the van okay do you see a leak is anything leaking on the ground if you have you know a concrete driveway that'll be easy to notice if you don't put a piece of cardboard a ripped up box okay under your engine okay leave it there overnight okay when you go back the next morning you can look under there don't pull the cardboard out okay and be like hey it's right there hey here's the leak don't do that okay because that is totally counterproductive of why you did it to begin with okay leave the cardboard right there look under your vehicle look on the cardboard see where the puddle is if there's a leak there if it is follow it up okay um uh, once you actually follow it all the way up it doesn't go anymore go back down that's where it is it's at the utmost location okay now other leaks um especially when it comes to the fuel system okay newer vehicles are switching back to mechanical fuel pumps okay what does this mean electrical fuel pumps range in between 30 and 70 psi on fuel pressure okay it's not too bad um will it hurt absolutely it's pressurized fuel getting shot at you it will hurt okay but mechanical fuel pumps on the newer age vehicles now do 1200 to 1700 psi for the newer age uh, cars okay and that's gasoline engines flex fuel engines things like that we're not even getting started about diesels okay diesels are upwards of 3000 plus fuel psi coming out of those lines why am i telling you this be careful when you're dealing with fuel if you have a fuel leak be careful around that okay if the vehicle is off and you believe a leak is coming from those lines and you want to turn the vehicle on to double check which there's nothing wrong with that okay hold a piece of cardboard in front of where you believe the leak is okay instead of the fuel shooting at you it's going to shoot at the cardboard and protect you please man safety first when it comes to fuel um it hurts you have to go to the hospital when it happens you know just please be safe brother and wear your safety glasses okay i don't want anyone saying yo zach didn't say wear my safety glasses no <laughs> so wear your safety glasses when it comes to a fuel issue you'll be good to go uh did you have any other questions for me baby bliss um before i wrap up this uh youtube live today I see another person on as well. Where are you from? <laughs> There's a hose on top that is loose. Okay. What I need you to do with that hose is you got to follow it, man. Um, as you see. You have quite a bit of hoses and wires and cables, okay? 
So what you need to do is you need to follow that hose. See if there's a clamp on it. A lot of times there's a adjustable clamp on the end of the hose. And go ahead and tighten it. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the crazy part, man. Um, if it is a loose line, it's always good to check, okay? And I know sometimes that's not what you want to hear because it, it makes more work for us, but it's always better to be safe than sorry, especially when it comes to your vehicle. You know, you definitely don't want to be breaking down. So I would follow that line, make sure it's connected properly to where it's supposed to be. Um, you know, could just have a lot of slack, but you could be right. Could be actually loose and that could be a, the evap leak. So I would definitely double check that. The upper intake manifold. Oh yeah, 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 I do see those. Uh, whoa, she's he kidding me. Hold up, there we go, go back to it. All right, you talking about these right here. Oh, those. What is this? Hey, hold up. Right. You talking about these hoses right here? Or that one? You said toward the right. Oh. So you're talking about that hose right there? Let me see that one. There's two hoses. Okay. All right. Let's see right off the bat. It's going to be a little fuzzy. That one line right there, though. This one. Looks like it actually connects to an elbow that comes off your valve cover right there. Okay. Red tab. Yeah. Yeah, I see that one. Yeah, I see the connector with the red tab. Is that the one you're talking about? Are you talking about those two hoses that are on that red tab? Baby Bliss, you there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I see those. Those are vacuum hoses. Vacuum lines. It, yeah. If those are tore up in any way, that's your evap leak right there. This sensor... Right here? Dang it. Alright. That sensor right there. If you do not have that, your EVAP system will completely fail. Right, your engine will run terribly. You'll get misfires. Okay. Uh, easiest way on that one. I mean, you can get it online or grab it from a scrapyard. Um, it's actually pretty cheap. Uh, those do fail over time. Okay, because it is a sensor that is measuring, you know, the air fuel ratio. Okay when it comes to the UVAP system. So I would actually get it new. Uh, 
if you could. But yeah, if you just that one right there. Yep. Yeah, if one of those lines are broke, man, that's your, that's your large leak right there. Uh, that is called. Just a second, man. Trying to find it for you. One second, man. I'm still looking it up. Definitely doesn't want to make it easy. <laughs> Daddy's still doing his video, bud. Shh. I know, I'm trying to look a part up. Give me a second. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Trying to scare Daddy. He ain't gonna scare me. He ain't gonna scare me. I'm still here. I'm still here. <laughs> Man. It is not one to give up the name of that sensor F. Oh. Okay, let's see here. Hmm. Mm -mm. sensors right there. This one is on. Yeah, the sensor. Oh. 
Oh, it's the hose. That hose, you're going to have to use aftermarket hose. Silicone hose, nonetheless. Uh, when I replace those lines, I actually have a hose kit that I use that is uh, silicone, not rubber. Uh, it's totally your shot, uh, I mean, your call on that one. But the difference in between silicone and rubber is silicone, I never have to replace it again due to dry rot, weathering, stuff like that. Rubber, if you plan on keeping the vehicle for a while, uh, rubber is going to dry rot again. So it's up to you. Um, I believe the hose kit, I have it listed on the channel. I think it's like 40 bucks, but it's a big pack. So, you know, it lasts you for a while and you can use it for other things than vacuum leaks. But that would be your fix right there, man. If you already have the sensor, you know, it, it's your call on what to do with the hoses on whether you want to go silicone or rubber. But you definitely have to replace them. You got anything else for me, bro? Yeah, what do you got, baby bliss? Yes. Yes, I know. Yeah. We got Goodness. Have you had this vehicle for a while? Or uh did you just pick it up? Okay. Alright, now you said the firewall behind the intake manifold. There's a hose on that firewall. It's cut in half. Now, if that hose looks anything like these hoses, does it look like those? Also, does your heat work? It's thicker than that, huh? Yeah. Uh, if it's a thicker hose than that, the only one I'm thinking of is your heater core hoses. Um, and if, if those hoses are cut, then it, it sounds like someone removed your heater core. What? Yeah, that'd be the uh, only time I would see uh, bigger lines than that uh, cut, plugged, and of no use would be your uh, heater core lines. Uh, do you have anything else for me, baby Lace?
All right. Well, hey, how about this? If you have any other questions when you're out at the vehicle, okay, and you don't know which way to really turn, okay, after this YouTube live, I want you to send me an email with pictures, okay, with pictures. We'll get you back up and running, man, okay? So send it over to sell those flipping cars at gmail.com, okay? It goes right to my phone. I'll go ahead and answer it. Um, you know, today's Sunday, so um, I'm not really doing too much. I'm going to spend some time with my wife and kids. But um, I'll still answer you. You can best believe that. Okay? So, no problems there. But yeah, if it's anything like those vacuum lines, and you said they're thicker, then you're looking at a heater core that was removed. And... Um, well, the heater core wasn't really removed. That's the whole part of it, okay? What people do is they cut the lines at the heater core, okay? They cut the lines at the heater core, and they don't replace it. Um, hold on. Well, I mean, it's, it's just the, the name of the YouTube channel at gmail.com. Oh, I have a tablet I'm using as my camera right now, and I don't know how to type on it because it doesn't have a keyboard. So, um, but yeah, so what happens is a heater core removal is about seven to eight hour process, okay? Uh, because you have to remove the dash and everything. What a lot of people do is they leave the heater core in there because it has already failed, and they say, I don't really care about heat anymore. Because you live in Florida, this is a normal, common thing, is people will just cut the hose and plug it, and then they will uh, join the two hoses that are coming from the engine and going back to the thermostat, they'll join them. And that way, it just bypasses the heater core altogether. Now, is this bad? Uh, yes and no, okay, depending on where you live. Yes, if you ever want to have heat in your car again, it is bad. No, because your radiator is still cooling everything down, and as long as the rest of your cooling system is up to operating condition and working properly, you won't have any overheating issues anyways. Now, will an overheating issue be fixed by a heater core? No, okay? Will it cool your engine down if it is overheating? Yes, but only temporarily. So, you can run without a heater core. If those lines are cut and you don't care about having a heater or not, you're good to go, okay? Uh, did you have anything else today, Bayless? All right, guys. Well, thank you, everyone, that actually tuned in today on this YouTube Live. I know uh, we had actually uh, multiple uh, problems we were having today, which I love it. I love helping you guys with all the automotive problems you're having. Uh, thank you so much for actually watching the videos and tuning in on the YouTube Live. Make sure you stay tuned uh, for every Sunday to come at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard. Uh, I will be here and uh, helping you guys. So awesome. Hey, Babyless, you are most welcome, brother. And uh, guys, anytime you have questions about your vehicles or you're having problems with your vehicle, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I will be here. And also stay tuned for a lot more auto DIY videos. I'm working on a 2005 Grand Cherokee head gasket replacement video right now. Uh, it takes a little bit of time. It's an hour-long video. 
but I wanted to actually be detailed for you guys. That way, when you do need to replace your head gas here and you do not want to pay a shop two to three thousand dollars to do it, I just did a video for free for you guys to make sure you are back on the road and you get to keep that money in your pockets. So thank you so much again, guys. And until next time, hey, keep on wrenching, guys. Take care.